These are my yellow Jakari models. I've shown them before in videos in the past, and honestly, I just like them and kind of always have. I love the backstory, which is basically desert dark Yaldar, and I want to reinterpret that idea to come up with a truly unique Jakari in this video and solve my biggest problem with Warhammer 40K. About two years ago, I tried to do something similar by making my scheme more efficient. At that time, I was also not a fan of my banana boys and girls, and I thought by changing it and making it slightly more efficient, I'd be happier with it. I even said in that video, gives me confidence when trying to paint the rest of my army, as opposed to painting my army and being unhappy with it. Well, guess what? I knew I still wasn't happy with that scheme, and I started painting my entire army anyways, because I was trying to answer the question, how long does it take to paint an entire 40K army? Inevitably, I didn't finish painting, and that question goes unanswered. But if you're curious how much time I've spent so far, here it is. So today we're coming up with a scheme I actually like. Like, really, really like. But more than just a scheme. I'm gonna take Dark Eldar, a faction that I kind of already like, and make it my own. One of the staples of the Dark Eldar faction are Cabalite Warriors. They're one of the three basic troop choices in the army, and I think they're the most iconic of the three. I have two issues I want to solve with them. First, they're incredibly derpy, conical helmets. I understand that they're iconic, and some of them are okay sprinkled in amongst an army, but as a main helmet design for the faction, it's a bit too, uh, uh... I'm probably gonna catch a massive internet flack for claiming to be a Dark Eldar fan and denouncing the helmet design, so please accept this photo of Phil Kelly and I as repentance. Secondly, every single warrior has this bizarre, wide-legged stance. Just like the helmet, this is totally fine in moderation, but when every dude is standing like that, you really lose the sense of how tall and imposing Dark Eldar can be. They're supposed to be pompous elves, right? We need some poses that drip. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> you get me? Okay, let's fix the first problem, the heads. Head swapping is baby's first conversion, so this should be pretty simple. My Trakari live in the desert, right? So let's find some appropriately dry and dusty heads to swap out some of these helmets. At first, I was thinking of 3D printing some options, and I found lots of bits for Gene Stealer cults, Talarn, Desert Raiders, etc. But they didn't feel alien enough. These ones are a great option, and they remind me a lot of the helmets you'd find on Reaver jet bikes and witches, so thematically appropriate. I actually have some of these helmets laying around, so I won't need to print them out, and that sent me on kind of a bit hunt for other options in my collection. I found Vansar heads also give me sufficient alien vibes, and also the piratical Corsairs from Kill Team accomplished what I was trying to do with the aforementioned STLs while still feeling desert-like and Eldari. The Sybarite, or the leader of the unit of Cabalite warriors, can have the typical conical helmet as a way to make them feel like more Drakari without having every guy be a uh, dickhead. All right, on to fixing the pose. The Nachman Kill Team box that contains the Corsairs is ripe with fantastic Eldari poses. I'm partial to this homie with his walking towards camera menacingly gait. The problem with the Corsairs is they got all this gobbledygook going on them, so it's time to do some cleanup. With some clippers and an X-Acto knife, I do some rough removal of the various details. Dank Eldar are all about sharp angles, so any curvy filigree or ovular armor panels needs to go. I also need to make room for the future sculpting I'm gonna do on top of these sexy Eldar legs. Oh baby. Pro tip, to clean up this removal, I use a sponge sanding twig so it maintains the subtle curves of the legs while cleaning up the surface. I like the twigs with a 240 grit on one side and a 320 on the other. Also, plastic glue applied in a thin layer to the surface will clean up any shaving plastic bits you have left around to give you a better idea of where you're at. And I'd say we're about done. Time for some sculpting. I started pretty simple with good old fashioned milliput. With a scuffed up surface to give me some extra tooth, I apply a thin layer of putty, struggling to get it to attach to the model as opposed to my dental sculpting tool. And I, please, release. What the f Okay, when I finally apply the nastiest, roughest layer of Milliput, I'll start to smooth it out with a flat color shaper, which is basically a silicone brush. I also have a little water on this tool to prevent the Milliput from inevitably sticking to the tool and not my model. I'm trying to establish that classic peak in the middle of the thigh that you see on all Dark Eldar armor. All right, 
Hands up if you didn't think this volcanic, craggy, wasteland surface of Milliput would come out looking this nice. I know I didn't. In between each layer, I'll do some very light scraping with my X-Acto and some sanding with my sanding twig, and then I'll keep doing more layers, but I've upgraded my process. Instead of using water, I'll use a neutral lotion. Because Milliput is water soluble, it's very easy to use too much and absolutely disintegrate it. With lotion, it's much harder to do that, and I find I get an even smoother surface when using lotion instead of water. I'll put the lotion on my hand and the putty on my thumb so it's all right there, ready for me. Big shout out to Modern Synthesis and his blogs on how to start sculpting. It got me started all those years ago. The last improvement I'll make is using a 3070 split of green stuff and milliput respectively instead of just milliput. The green stuff lends this sticky, almost stretchy nature. That's really nice for sculpting and the majority milliput allows the cured putty to be sanded and scraped really nicely. Shout out to Valbjorn, the daddy of Space Wolf conversions for this advice. I actually painted one of Valbjorn's conversions in a previous video if you wanna check it out. And boom, Corsair legs looking awfully Dracari, but we can do a little bit better. Before we do that, however, let's get a briefer from this video's sponsor. Cobalt Keep has a new product they're showing off today in their modular paint storage system. The product was designed to grow with you as your paint collection grows. With five shelves and two side pieces, you can easily assemble one unit together. I'll be honest, I was pleasantly surprised by the fit and finish of how these pieces go together and also how sturdy they seem. With the unit assembled, we can now assemble a bench with a combination of a right angle piece and a shroud that helps keep your paints organized. It's worth mentioning that the final units will have clear shrouds so you can easily see your paints. There are covers for Citadel paint pots as well as dropper bottles, but a variety of brands are accommodated by these two options. Now you can easily remove benches from the paint rack as small portable trays and you can organize your paint in logical groups. So when you need to paint ultramarines, you're always grabbing the ultramarine bench. If you get more paints and need more storage, each side piece has an additional connector so you can expand as your collection needs. The individual units are sized such that they fit nicely into an Ikea Kallax unit, a piece of furniture I'm sure we're all familiar with as hobbyists and gamers. Personally, I really appreciate how intentional this design is, and while there still is a fair degree of modularity and DIY potential, Cobalt Keep clearly put a lot of thought into how this tool was going to be used and how it helped people. If you're interested in organizing your hobby space by picking up a couple of units, they're running a Kickstarter campaign that is live right now, and you can find a link down in the description. Thank you to Cobalt Keep for sponsoring this episode. Now back to my conversions. Some Dark Eldar have this cute little anklet they picked up back in high school when they went to Eldar summer camp. To recreate this, I wrapped some aluminum wire around a suitably sized tool, in this case, a circular file, and then clipped it. I opened it up a bit to get it around the ankle and then pinched it shut. With some squishing and sanding, the ring actually closes up pretty nicely, no putty needed. But you can hide the seam on the inside of the leg or behind it if you have a cape-wearing character like myself. Next up, leg spikes, a very important detail. I harvested some spikes from an old bit and glued them on, making sure to use a decent amount of plastic glue to get a nice weld between the two parts. I even reinforced this joint with a bit more sprue goo. The last detail to add are some of these kneecap wing dinger axe head things. I have no idea what they're for, but they look pretty mean. I sketched out the shape on some styrene, cut it out roughly with my X-Acto knife, and then shaped it with some files and super glued it on. Enjoy the view through my glasses. The very last step was doing some very high grit polishing with a 2000 grit sponge. Putty has a tendency to make really sharp edges, especially the pure milliput stuff, and it's actually not super nice for painting. Knocking that edge back and rounding it over makes it a lot better. Okay, I got some sexy legs. Did I mention that Cabalite Warriors are a basic troop choice in the Drakari army that you often have 10, 20, or 30 of these guys? Anyways, onto the torso for this singular dude. Similar to last time, we'll remove a lot of details with an X-Acto knife and clippers, and we'll sand it smooth and apply plastic glue to clean it all up. I added some more segmented armor to his torso, just like last time, and then the first detail I wanted to add was his drug pod. Many Drakari models have a tube running from their pectoral muscle to somewhere on their back that administers their combat drugs, a feature that has remained in their range for a while now, and I freaking love it. I took some guitar string, which was admittedly a bit too thick in diameter, and spent a very long time perfectly bending it to match the shape that I needed. Also in this shot, you can see that I replaced the shoulder pad with a much sharper and more angular Dark Eldar one that I unceremoniously clipped off of another warrior. 
With the drug tube in place, I tried to sculpt the oval shape on top of that, but that proved somewhat challenging, so I harvested a broken soul stone from a leftover incubi bit, sliced off the backside, and glued it on. Maybe it's a little too big, but I think it works pretty well. If you don't want to harvest a shoulder pad off of one of your warriors, they're pretty easy to scratch build. I grabbed a suitably sized hollow styrene rod and cut a length of it and tapered the edges with my clippers. With some filing and sanding and bending, it fits pretty nicely over the shoulder and glues to the part like a regular plastic bit would. It was still a bit too long in the shot you're seeing right now and I ended up shortening it even more. To finish off this epic kit bash, I grabbed the Cabalite Trueborn half of the Kill Team Soul Shackle box set, which is sadly just a regular Cabalite Warrior sprue and this tiny little sprue of cool parts. Where'd you think that was getting all the sacrificial warrior parts to cut up? Because my guy has a holster, I used the reloading pistol arms, which is probably the coolest arms in the whole set. Stop on one of those cool domed helmets, we have a pretty awesome conversion. We have one last thing to do. Priming a conversion has a tendency to reveal all of the terrible mistakes you overlook, but I'm happy to say this one kind of holds up pretty well. The chest is definitely a bit crusty, but the legs turned out pretty clean. Oh, did I forget to mention that the Corsair kit has capes that are perfect for Dark Eldar? Match made in Webway Heaven. Well, that was one way to make a differently posed Cabalite warrior. Admittedly, it was wildly time consuming. It would not scale up for a whole army in the slightest, but we can make one a little bit faster. So let's give that a shot. We could always use witches. Those models have super dynamic poses, but similar to the last experiment, it would require sculpting that segmented armor on at least one of their legs. There might be a slightly better option. Raiders, one of the faction's transports have these dudes who are hanging off the side of the vehicle. Most players don't end up using these guys because it's more bodies to paint that aren't playable models. I think it adds to the piratical vibe of Drakari, but suffice it to say that there are a lot of these models hanging around that no one uses, and they have pretty interesting poses. I've used some of these poses in the past to make some fun conversions with a lot of motion. First, we need to break down his helmet because his posture is wrong for a normal stance. Most parts came off pretty nicely, but the torso was giving me some grief, so I had to be more aggressive. I'm like a real life homunculi. I could then start chopping the leg up. I pinned the foot to the leg without super glue at this time, so I could play around with how I wanted the foot to fall, how long the leg was, without committing to anything just yet. I decided to chop the toes off so they could have a more in-progress walk look versus dragging his back foot. I actually don't have any footage of that process because I did this hobby work at home, which is the first time I've hobbied at home in easily five months. This process was actually a lot of fun. You can see the putted up version in this shot right here, however. Next, most Dark Elder have a tabard that hangs awkwardly in the middle of their wide-legged stance, so I wanted to add one to this guy that I harvested from another poor Cabalite warrior. With some magic putty to cover the gaps, a gun pointed up in the air like this one, a cool Trueborn sword like that one, and a Corsair head with one of the masks, we're done. That one was much faster than the first one, but like the first one, requires cannibalizing existing kits, which is never really a great feeling. Anyways, those were some proof of concepts for more varied Cabalite warrior poses. Now, let's work on the scheme. I want a scheme that's heavy on khaki and black, with a desaturated green and brown for belts and fabrics, with a teal and yellow spot color. The yellow and teal spot color will tie it into my other models nicely, and the khaki, black, and green, and brown have a very cool militaristic vibe that I think will work well. I started off by testing Grim Black and Black Templar, two black transparent acrylic products meant to be applied like a wash that heavily tint the surface. I wanted to see if I could take my models with their current undesirable scheme and convert it into one that actually works so I could save some time, and sadly, it wasn't really looking like anything that was good. I instead tried to rebase coat the mouths with black and apply some simple highlights, but that also looked a little strange. I'm not digging the black armor and khaki fatigues look. It forces the interest away from the models. Let's try swapping this around. Khaki armor and black fatigues. Now we're cooking with liquefier gas. With a couple of teal elements and various armor plates painted yellow, I think the scheme is going to rock. Let's paint up some warriors.
like them. Like actually this time. Finally, I have models that really feel like desert warriors and not just because I painted them yellow and put them on desert bases. For the longest time, I haven't really felt like I belonged in the 40K universe. I like Dark Yaldar, but I disliked my scheme and some of the range's design choices weren't for me. And because of that, I just worked on other things that I liked more All my army languished. For me as a hobbyist, I need to feel some amount of creative ownership over the characters, war bands, and armies that I work on. It's the gas that gets me through a project, but also makes me fall in love with one. Some of that ownership comes from creating a compelling scheme, but the model's design is also crucial. When AOS replaced Warhammer Fantasy, you could probably count on two hands the number of times I played first and second edition games. Wood Elves got lumped into all the other undesirables from Fantasy, and Vampire Counts became legions of Nagash, with the spotlight moving away from vampires. Both things that felt like mine kind of got changed or were forgotten. But then Soulblight got redone, and Vampiric Bloodlines were back in a big way, and Blood Knights got new models, and we were seeing awesome vampires in Underworlds and Cursed City. An awesome thematically vampire-centric army was much easier to achieve, and suddenly I have a fully painted army, and I played more games of the current version of AOS than ever before. Games Workshop isn't fixing Dark Eldar for me, so while it's a bit more work than my vampires, it's worth it to feel like I have a home in 40k. It's one of the largest, if not the largest, war game in the entire industry. I just really haven't given the game a chance. But now that I'm confident in my scheme and I know it's possible to model characters in a way that I like, I'm ready to start rolling some dice. I want to take a moment just to state that if you don't like converting or coming up with your own unique schemes, that is totally okay. We all enjoy this hobby in our own way. And you can have that feeling of creative ownership by creating a unique backstory for your models or by using a different successor chapter for your Space Marines. The universe of 40K is so gigantic, and that can oftentimes be a bad thing when it comes to continuity and trying to understand the universe. But what it does for us creative people is give us a massive sandbox for us to make 40K what we want it to be. And that is truly awesome. So get out there and make it your own. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. What do you think of my desert dark Eldar? Do they feel cooler than they did previously? I think they do, and I hope you do as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll have other videos that are similar to it linked at the end of this one for you to check out. Don't forget this video sponsor, Cobalt Keep. And if you like my channel and you wanna support it, there are a number of ways that you can do that. All things linked down in the description, but namely a Patreon campaign where you get access to my Discord server, where we chat about all things like how to convert Liddy Dark Eldar models, or who'd win in a 1v1, a Strubial Vect or the Hesperex. You can also buy hobby tools that I recommend down in the description below. All the sculpting tools that I used will be down there. You can pick up my model or any merch on my web store, miniac.co. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to pay my minis!